Hey there, performance management students. In this video, I'm gonna help you get a pass on your upcoming ACCA exam. We're gonna dive into throughput accounting and section B of your upcoming exam. I'm going to take you through question sweep treats, looking at all of the exam technique that you need to get a pass on your PM exam. Guys, if you like this video and you want more, check the description. You can access all of my PM support videos. Alrighty guys, let's get started. Welcome performance management students. In this video, I'm going to take you through a debrief of question sweet treats bakery. This is from the practice exam two. This is from section B. Before we begin, let us remember the exam approach. Section B often has the most difficult questions, can be very time consuming. So I suggest you come back to section B after you've completed section A and section C. And when you start section B, you'll find three short scenarios, each scenario containing five questions. Well, give yourself 17 minutes for each scenario, each set of five questions. And when you start a scenario, have a quick scan through the questions and do the easier theoretical ones first before you tackle the numerical ones. That way, if you run out of time, you've completed the easy ones first and you run out of time on the more difficult questions. In this video, however, I will take you through the questions sequentially. Without further ado, let's begin with the first question in the set. And we always start by reading the verb, reading the requirement. And they want us to identify the bottleneck activity. This is the stage of production that limits our output. The way we tackle this, we've got to identify the processes and they give us the processes, the weighing, the mixing, and the baking. Which of those processes does not have enough minutes to make our full production plan? So my approach, exam technique wise, let's make one row for each process. We've got weighing, we've got mixing, we've got baking. And you'll do this on scratch paper. I'll be doing it right here. Or you can also do it in the scratch pad. And I will make three columns. First column will be the minutes that we have. Next column will be the minutes that we need. And the third column will then be bottleneck. Remember, the scratch paper is only for you. Marking team does not see it. So take time saving shortcuts like I'm doing now. Now that we have a template set up, we're going to plug in the minutes that we have. Two forty, one eighty, and one four four zero. That's from the scenario right over here. The others right came from the question above. Here's the tricky part: the minutes that we need. We see the common complication in this question that we've seen in many other questions in our practice exam kits, that this company is working in batches. And first step, let us understand the number of batches for each product. And we know the batch size for each product, for the brownies, the muffins, and the cupcakes here, we know the maximum demand. So if we, if, we can if we can sell everything that we produce, 1,440 divided by 40, 
That's three and change. But we cannot manufacture in a partial batch. We've got to run a whole extra batch to do those remaining units. So we have to do a full setup, a breakdown, and a cleaning of the production line to, to, to run one more, one more batch. So if we round up, that's going to be a total of four batches to do 140 units. The next one is nice and round. So if we want to sell 90 muffins and we make them in batches of 30, then we're going to do three batches here. And the cupcakes, 100 divided by 20, that's five. So to identify the bottleneck, first step is to identify and calculate the number of batches per product. The next step is to calculate the total number of minutes that we will need for each process now that we know the number of batches we're going to run. Now this table comes into play down here. So in your calculators, you're going to very carefully multiply 4 times 15. You're going to add to that 3 batches times 15 minutes per batch. Then you're going to add to that 5 times 20. So the line in your scientific calculator will look like this. You're going to press return and the total minutes that we will need is 205. Do we have enough minutes to run all of our weighing batches? Yes, we do. No bottleneck there. Guys, that is the approach. So you will continue with that same approach. You will multiply the number of batches times the mixing minutes, product by product, product you get the total, the sum, and we will then discover for mixing, we're going to need a total of 188 minutes. And if we do the same thing for baking, we're going to discover that we need 1,410 minutes. Performance management team. Is the bottleneck apparent? Well, it should be right here. We need 188, we have 180, we do not have enough. So it's the mixing process that limits our output. We have plenty of baking time. We have enough minutes to bake everything. So, so team, the answer is mixing. Moving on to question 27, or the second question in sweet treats, we read the requirement, what's the optimal production plan, and we see another time-consuming, laborious, numerical question. This one might even be longer and more difficult than the one that we just did. So remember, you only need three out of five correct to get a pass. I would flag this one and come back to it after I did the theoretical ones. That being said, let's go through it together. And we have to work through multiple stages, multiple steps to solve this. An optimal production plan will be based on maximizing the throughput contribution per unit of scarce resource. And they tell us mixing is scarce. So it would be per mixing minute. And this is complicated because we're working in batches. So the, min the minutes are per batch. So we've got to get the throughput contribution per batch. And throughput contribution is the price minus the materials per unit multiplied by the number of units in the batch. So boy, we've got a lot to do. 
And just to make it cleaner and easier to follow, I'm going to do it in the spreadsheet, but in the real exam, we'd need to do it on scratch paper. So I've got a spreadsheet open. Unfortunately, you couldn't do this in the exam because to find a spreadsheet, you'd have to run over to section C. And by the time you copied all of this information down, you're probably not saving time. But let me take you through the exam technique, the step-by-step -step approach to solve this. We've got brownies, we've got muffins, we've got cupcakes. And we are looking for throughput, contribution, per batch, per mixing minute. So let's do this. Throughput, contribution. And now we can do, that's per unit. Then we can do the number of units that are in a batch. Then we can get TPC per batch. And then if we get the mixing minutes, and if we divide the throughput contribution per batch by the mixing minutes, we will get the TPC throughput contribution per minute. So the first one, I'm going to get that by mental math. I see 150 price minus 25 is equal to 1.25. For the muffins, we've got 140, $1.40 minus 15 cents, we get another 1.25. For the cupcakes, it's $2 minus 0 0.25, 25 cents, that's 1.75. And we're going to produce in batches of batch size of 40, of 30, of 20. So we multiply one by the other and we get the throughput contribution per batch. We plug in the number of minutes. That's mixing minutes, remember. So we plug in a 20, a 16, and a 12. And we divide one by the other. Now, team, we've got the throughput contribution per batch per mixing minute. We can rank them. And the biggest number is best. So we're going to maximize our cupcakes. That's first thing we do. Once we're done making cupcakes, we're going to make brownies. That's number two. And the lowest throughput contribution, the muffins. So I'm going to put a three here. Now, team, time is running short. If we are running out of time, I'm going to look at the answers right now. I'm going to go for an educated guess. They didn't make it so easy for us for the guessing because we know we're going to maximize production on cupcakes. So we're going to make a, a hundred cupcakes no matter what. But next step is brownies. So I'm probably going to produce more brownies than muffins. So without any more information and time being spent, I'm going to put down a guess here and keep moving. And I'll keep it flagged. If I have time at the end, I could continue. But... I'm not going to in the real exam. I'm going to time has run out probably. I'm now going to move to the next scenario. So I'm going to guess here. And as you know, my guess would be correct. Isn't that great? But here, we're not here to guess in this video. We're here to practice and learn together. So let's finish it together. Now that we've got the rank, I'm going to make a plan, production plan. And I'm going to have a product here. Then I'm going to have hash sign for the number that I produce. Minutes used. Minutes remain. 
Okay, this table is going to help me out. Now, we're going to first do the minimum amount to meet that long-term contract. And if we look at the long-term contract, which is the minimum daily demand, that's 30, 20, and 10 of each product. And all of those numbers are less than one batch, right? So we can make one batch, meet that contract, and have some left over. And we said we're going to produce in the order of cupcakes, brownies, muffins. So I will do the first batch, and I will make 20 cupcakes, 40 brownies, 30 muffins. I'll fulfill that order. I'll have some left over to sell on the open market. And the minutes that we're going to use, that's going to be 20 minutes here, 15, uh, sorry, I got that wrong. That's going to be 12 minutes, 20 minutes, and 16. Remember, I'm taking from the mixing row. Now, our shortage this day is 120. That's the maximum that we can we can use. So that's this um, cell here in E12. That'll be equal to the 120 minutes minus the minutes used here. Got 108 left. Now, after we make the brownies, we will have consumed another 20 minutes. So we got that left. And now I have a relative cell address, so it's quite easy to keep copy pasting. Now, guys, I'm going to produce in the same order. I've met my minimum demand. So if I want to maximize my profit, I maximize my throughput contribution. So I'm going to make more cupcakes. Then I'll make more brownies. Then I'll make more muffins. So it's going to look like that. I'm going to do another 80 cupcakes. So that's four more batches, guys. So that will be equal to 4 times 12, 48 minutes to do four more batches. And now we have a problem. We have 24 minutes left. Next thing that I'm going to do, guys, is make brownies. That's ranking number two. And I see that it is 20 minutes to do a batch of brownies. I've got 24 minutes, so I can do one more batch of brownies, guys. Brownies have 40 units in them. And I will do one batch, which takes up 20. Yes, I have some spare minutes, but I can't do anything with those minutes because I cannot do any batches with four. So team, there we have our production plan. And if we add them up, we've got 100 cupcakes, we've got 40 and 40, that's 80 brownies, and 30 muffins. So wow, look at that, guys. The answer is A. We did it with a guess, and then we proved it by taking it all the way to the end. Difficult question. Unlikely you would get through all of this and the other four questions in 17 minutes. If you did, you would be a rock star performance management student. But if you, if you left this one to the end and you did well on the others, you'd still have a comfortable pass. Moving on to the next question in the set, question 28. Finally, a theoretical question, which we can clear rather easily. Look at this. Which two of the following statements will improve the throughput accounting ratio? So it might be helpful to write that down on scratch paper, and then visually you can go through it. So the throughput accounting ratio is the price minus the materials divided by the hours on the bottleneck resource over the other factory costs, the overheads and the labor divided by the total hours of bottleneck that we have in this period. Now, if the cafe, let's go through them. The cafe customer wants a discount. Team, if the price goes down, 
throughput accounting ratio goes down, that one does not work. A bulk discount is available on flour and sugar. That means the materials will go down, not the price. That would improve my throughput contribution per unit. That would go up. So the second one is feasible. It's a good answer. We like that one. The third one, there is additional demand. Demand is an external factor. I don't see the external demand in my formula. So I'm not liking the third one. It doesn't seem to make sense to me. The fourth one, the rent of the premises has been reduced. Rent is at overhead. Rent goes down. Throughput accounting ratio goes up. So the two best answers are the second and the fourth. Guys, look at that. This is a great um, example of exam technique. This is the one that we want to do first out of the gate when we start question sweet treats. We want to clear this one, you know, in two minutes. Moving on to the fourth question in the set. This is a nice question. It's combining the, the short-term decision-making principles with the throughput accounting principles. And we want to understand the incremental profit of renting a new oven. So let's go through it. There is a food festival happening. We want to make more cupcakes so we can rent more ovens. Ovens cost $45 a day. So if we rent one more oven, the incremental cost will be $45. And if we look at the baking time for the cupcakes, it's 120 minutes or two hours for a batch of cupcakes. So eight hours will give me four extra batches. Two hours per batch, eight hours of oven, Eight divided by two is four. So we get four extra batches. That's the benefit. Four batches multiplied by two dollars minus. 0 0.25 cents, that's the throughput contribution. Remember, all of the other costs are assumed fixed. Multiplied by the 20 cupcakes that are in a batch, that will come to an additional throughput contribution of 140. I moved that upper 45 negative over just so our column is, is neater. And the difference, guys, is positive 95. So that would be the incremental profit from renting the oven for the day. That is the correct answer. Moving on to the next question, another logical question about the throughput accounting ratio. So let us first put the formula down again so we have a visual reference when we go through these options. So remember the throughput accounting ratio, price minus direct materials, that's throughput contribution divided by hours on the bottleneck unit per product over the over other factory costs in the period divided by the bottleneck hours in the period. Remember this, two over one would be very good. Look at that. The throughput contribution per hour is exceeding the factory costs per hour. So look at that. We have one left over. If those were dollars, we would have one dollar left over. It, we, we earn two dollars per hour. It costs one dollar per hour, so one is left over. Now, if it was flipped, this situation would be bad news. Here, the Throughput contribution per hour does not cover the other factory costs per hour. 
So we'd be loss making in this situation. Now that we see what's happening, 1.45 is the good situation, isn't it? It's that. So team, the first one is clearly false. Operating costs did not exceed throughput contribution because the ratio is, is, is greater than one. The next one is also false because the bottleneck is the weighing process. So it's the weighing process that's limiting our production. So less idle time in the mixing department would not help. We would need to fix the weighing process first. And the last one, improved efficiency in the weighing. Yes, if we could weigh faster, the time per unit would go down. The throughput contribution per hour would then go up. So we would be more efficient. We'd be selling more units per hour and the throughput accounting ratio would go up. So the last one is true. Performance management students, there you have it. A review of Sweet Treats Bakery and the throughput accounting ratio.